It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Google. Google's two-step verification was built to secure your account and help prevent cyber attacks, even if your password is compromised. That's why Google has made it easy to sign into your account with this additional layer of protection. Just one tap and you're in. Learn more at safety.google. A new column by ESPN's Zach Lowe highlights the situation for the Miami Heat and 22-year-old Tyler Hero. Is he good enough to become a star? And if not, how can Miami make him the centerpiece of a trade for either Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell? We look at the possibilities on today's edition of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Heat Nation. It's a Friday edition of Locked On Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. However, you may be watching or listening on YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. I am David Ramil, and with me as always is my co-host Wes Goldberg. It's a, a tough time in the offseason as many teams are trying to figure out exactly what to do as they move forward with their next season. And I think Miami is in a very unique situation because they're still angling for a superstar. We haven't heard anything regarding the possibilities of Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell. In fact, the latest that we've heard is that maybe neither of them gets traded and not for a good long while. But Miami is still angling for these possibilities. And at the same time, they're doing so in the hopes that teams around the league view Tyler Hero as a potential building block superstar. And a new column by ESPN's Zach Lowe underscores that perfectly. It was a really great read on the Tyler Hero conundrum. That's kind of how we're looking at it here because Miami has tied their hopes to not just Jimmy Butler, not just Bam Adebayo, but also to Tyler. He is a big part of what they're doing moving forward one way or the other because either they hope that he can take that leap or... They include him in a trade for Kevin Durant. And it's, uh, well, what's, what were your thoughts immediately on Zach's piece on Tyler here? Well, I think it made a lot of sense and it really did. It, it's so interesting that Tyler Hero sort of finds himself in the middle of basically the central question of the offseason, which is where does Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell end up? And when yeah. do they end up wherever they're going to go? And there's a lot of things to get in here that, that we're going to get into uh, as the show goes on. But uh, Tyler Hero, six man of the year, 20 point per game score, already polarizing in that regard because we've got, you know, people like John Hollinger out there saying, you know, it should have been Kevin Love for six man, kind of <laughs> dismissing what Tyler Hero did as yay points and things like that. And then, you know, Tyler Hero is uh, obviously a volume scorer off the bench for Miami. Then the, and the question was whether or not he could do that in the starting lineup. We, we heard Charles Barkley saying stuff about yeah. that earlier in the season. Hey, do it against starters and then I'll be impressed. And, right. the, and, and of course, you've got Heat fans defending Tyler Hero because they love Tyler Hero, as we've talked about a lot on this show. And in the playoffs, Tyler Hero gets hurt. The groin thing is an issue throughout the postseason, even before he had to miss games. And then uh, it was a disappointing playoff for him, and he couldn't quite be the guy that the Heat had hoped that he would be. And now you have a 22-year-old that's still c- coming off of a very promising season in which he took a leap from a down Absolutely. year two into a year three. Uh, but you still wonder how good can he be and can he be that good when the Heat need him to be as good as they need him to be? And so you take all of that, and then you and then you thrust that entire situation into, well, we also want to the trade current, for Kevin yeah. Durant, and he's right. our best sort of veteran piece, kind of blue-chip young player that we can include in a potential Kevin Durant package. And I just want to read this excerpt from Zach Lowe's piece um, because I think it encapsulates everything that we're getting into here. Hero is perhaps the most polarizing high-wattage player in the NBA. He has reached this strange point just as he becomes the key veteran in any potential Miami Heat trade package for Kevin Durant, Donovan Mitchell, or whichever star becomes available next. The Heat so far have uh, have not gotten much traction on either front, sources say, but they are still trying and can never be counted out. If Miami pulls off a superstar trade, it's going to be because, in part, that team on the other end is higher on Hero than consensus. Yeah, and here we are, uh, just having wrapped up his third year and another offseason of trouble or weird perception about Tyler Hero. Like, following year one, there was a lot of expectation coming because he had stepped up on occasional moments during Miami's run to the finals 
in the Orlando bubble. And so a yeah. lot of people thought, you know, here he was as another potential star and things of that sort. Then in year two, with, again, very little offseason, no time to really rebuild his game. I don't think he took a step back. He just didn't take the huge leap forward a lot of people expected him to, myself included. In year three, with a full offseason of work, he did take a leap. Six man of the year. I think a little bit more efficient as a scorer. Still, uh, you know, issues there as far as a defensive player. Put on the muscle he needed to, but not necessarily enough. And it didn't necessarily last throughout the whole regular season and playoffs. He broke down towards the end there. He had that groin injury and that took him out of it. So here we are yet again having to reassess what Miami has in Tyler here. And I think that's the crux of everything here is that you're just you're not quite sure. And as Lowe points out, and as you just explained, you know, we're, we're here year four now as he's entering year four. And you have to hope that either he takes that star turn or that other teams around the league view him as such. And in context of what's happening this offseason, is Tyler Hero... Should they include Tyler Hero in a trade for Kevin Durant? Because I think that's basically what we're coming down to is there's potential there and maybe he's reached a lot of it and maybe he's plateaued. I see a lot of comments from a lot of Heat fans believing that he's plateaued, that this is the version of who he'll be for the rest of his career, which seems kind of odd considering he's only 20 years old. Something that Lowe points out. There's certainly warts there in his game as a playmaker, as a defender, things of that sort. Can he improve? Absolutely. And that's the, that's the problem there, is that you're looking at it from both sides of the, possi- the equation yeah. here, is that he's good, there's problems in his game, but he can get better. Mm-hmm. But even if so, even if he, let's just say he takes that leap, is he the star that you want to hang on to? Is he the one that you want to build around at this point, given Miami's limited window with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Kyle Lowry, or would you include him in a trade for Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, and, and you know the, that's one of the key questions that we're going to answer here. Should Miami include him for KD or Mitchell? We're going to get into should he start and how good could he ultimately be. Um, but starting with the, the Durant and the Mitchell stuff, I don't. It doesn't really matter what you and I say. It kind of feels like Miami will and and has offered Tyler Hero for Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell. So whatever we say, it kind of feels like they've already gone down that path, and now it's just about what the rest of that package looks like and how that goes against the other packages that Brooklyn and Utah are fielding here. And so, yeah, I think if, if you're the Heat, if it's Kevin Durant, yeah, you trade Tyler Hero. If it's, if, if it's Donovan Mitchell and you feel like that player right now is closer to what you need at that position than where Tyler Hero yeah. is, then yeah, yeah. I, I guess you do it. And with Donovan Mitchell, he's three years older than Tyler Hero. Um, but you figure, you know, his ceiling is probably higher. And, and you know. Is it? Is it? I mean, that's, probably, that's what kind of we're getting probably, at, right? I think that's the, that is sort of the central question. It is, and with Tyler, you know, Look, you're not going to find a lot of people who like Tyler here more than I do. And, and one thing I and one thing again, that kind of goes against him, and this goes, again, it, we've heard from Zach Lowe and from Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report. Just pull a random sampling of front office executives around the league, and they're, they're split on Tyler Hero. Some people think that he's Lou Williams. Some people think that he could be Devin Booker Light. Who knows? It kind of it, it, it depends on who you ask. It's a wide spectrum. I, I, I'm more towards the. I think he could be an all star. You know, a, a multiple time multiple time all star. I think yep. yeah, the athletic concerns are definitely there. You know, the short wingspan, all the things that we talked about. He's not a great athlete, point blank. He's just not. He's gotten better. You know, that first step has improved, and he's done things. He's added muscle. He's done things to help, but he's yeah. just never going to be a great athlete. But I, I don't think that you can replace the basketball feel, and I think that feel for the game is elite. I think it's elite. I think his footwork is really good, underrated offensively. Udonis Haslam told me for the future I wrote for the Miami Herald, he's the most skilled basketball player I've ever been around, which says a yeah. lot because Haslam has been around a few of them. Um, yep. I, I love all that stuff. I love the work that he puts in. And there's also this idea that the Heat aren't that high on him because Hero's in every single trade rumor. He's in every trade rumor because he's so good. And, mm. and the Heat are actually internally really, really high on Tyler Hero. But they also understand that there's – kind of conflicting windows that they're operating in the Jimmy Butler one and the Tyler hero one. And, and obviously when you get as close as you did in the Jimmy Butler window, you want to try to maximize it. And that's why it kind of just keeps coming back down to Tyler heroes because bam out of bio is that dude already. He's that guy right yeah. now. He's obviously older than Tyler. Uh, Jimmy Butler, obviously that dude right now, if you're sure. going to make an, a move to go all in Tyler hero is the logical piece. It just sort of now depends on, how Brooklyn evaluates him, how Utah evaluates him, how whatever superstar, whatever team trading a superstar evaluates him, and that's the part that nobody can figure out. 
Yeah, there's some concerns about how good Tyler has become and how good he will eventually become. And I think that's where Miami finds themselves is that, you know, given everything that they're looking at right now with Kyle, with Bam, with Jimmy on the roster, and they need to bring a championship within the next few years while Jimmy's at his peak, Tyler has gone too good too fast and also not good enough at the same time. And so right. we'll kind of look at a bigger picture here about where Tyler fits in and what's next for the Miami Heat. But before we do that, just a reminder that betonline.net is still the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs, including where you expect Tyler Hero to be next season. So that's always a possibility. You can find reviews and news of every league, Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, NHL, eSports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They've got you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. And that beautiful sound means there's another sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business, so upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed, from down the street to around the globe. Like mine, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA right now. Shopify.com slash locked on NBA. Thanks again for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most starting July 18th? Locked on has given you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Again, starting July 18th, just a few days ago, Locked on NFL, wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We're here looking at the Tyler Hero conundrum because it's just, it's an interesting spot right now. Like, even in context of what we're talking about, the big move for Miami's offseason. Can they get Donovan Mitchell? Can they get Kevin Durant? And I think Durant's a little different because we're looking at clearly a player that's still even at 30, whatever, he's still in his prime, still a great player, one of the greatest players of all time. And yet even still people question about whether or not Miami should trade whatever in order to get KD because he's older, because he has injury issues. Every player has some warts on their resume as far as the, the public perception is concerned. And you look at Donovan Mitchell and you pointed out, yes, Mitchell is a better player now, but I don't know that the margin is as huge also. I think you're looking at a player, if you look at Donovan Mitchell just from, just in a vacuum, let's say, and compare him to Tyler Hero, you know, he's got issues as a playmaker. He's a little bit of a ball hawk. He's very inefficient, less efficient than Tyler. More athletic, more explosive, absolutely, certainly, and yet not significantly better as a defender. And I think a lot of his biggest issues as a defender were cleared up by the fact that they've got one of the best defenders in the NBA and Rudy Gobert there. And so when you look at what's what separates Mitchell and what many people might perceive, Heat fans included, as why he has more potential, why he, there's higher upside, it's basically just more athletic and he's had the ball in his hands a whole heck of a lot more than Tyler so that it enables him to be the big-time no. scorer that he's evolved into. Uh, so, I, I look, he also fits in better because he's going to get that kind of respect. He is that dude also, as you were pointing out in the first segment. He is a all, multi-time all-star, much more explosive, gets to the line a little bit better. But we're also kind of te- taking away from the fact that Tyler is still just 22. And this is you know, kind of another big part of the problem here, the conundrum that we're getting at, is that Tyler is – he's gotten so good so quickly. When he was drafted at 19, the calculus for the Miami Heat changed so completely. Uh, they had just acquired Jimmy Butler – they were in their first phase of transitioning away from the era of Dwayne Wade. Uh, they were still stuck in that, that, that kind of middle ground there. Nobody knew exactly what to expect from that 2019-20 team. They had Justice Winslow there. They had 
Deion Waiters, James yeah. Johnson, all figured to be prominent parts of the rotation. And when they couldn't step up, it was, uh, it was zero tolerance. That was the terminology that Spo used so frequently that year. Zero tolerance. And when they couldn't step up, they couldn't contribute, they were off. They were jettisoned elsewhere because they recognized immediately, internally, that that team could be better. And part of that reason was because Tyler was on this roster. At 19, he was already figuring prominently into Miami's short-term and long-term plans. And that changed everything for this group because they were supposed to be just okay and they were much better than okay. They're not quite a contender on paper. They didn't seem like the contender like a Milwaukee or a Philadelphia mm-hmm. or a Golden State is, but they were good. They were very good, just also not good enough. And that's kind of the heart of the situation when it comes to Tyler is that he's very good, but also not good enough at the same time just yet. But there's also potential there at 22. It's a it's a tough, tough situation to kind of put your mind around, you know. And, and so when you're well, looking at... Could, it- no, yeah, it's, a, it's a good point you make, and we look at it historically. What did the Heat tell Jimmy Butler when they got him in mm. 2019? This is not the end. We promise you that we're going to put another star next to you. And right. then Tyler Hero comes out a few months later and scores 37 points in the conference finals, and a lot of people yeah. are wondering, oh, is this is the star that, right. that Jimmy Butler always needed? And I think that was fair. I mean, 37 points in the conference finals had not been done since Magic Johnson. That's the kind of company that he was keeping. And... and uh, you know, the second year was disappointing for whatever reason, and then third year he takes that leap, and now Miami is in the mix for Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell. And what's, what's interesting about it is if Kevin Durant didn't request a trade, and if Utah wasn't blowing things up this offseason, then we're just mm. sort of sitting here being like, all right, what's the extension going to look like for Tyler Hero? And that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, but we're not, because those guys are available, and because Tyler Hero <laughs> got so good so quickly, but yet he's not good enough to be that guy right now, now we're including him in, in the rumors. In regards to the, the Donovan Mitchell thing, the only reason I say his ceiling is higher is because I know you, you kind of say it's just the athleticism. Well, that that is. That's why. It is the athleticism, and that is so important in today's NBA is being a kind of top-tier athlete. And Donovan Mitchell isn't you know top 1%, but he's probably top 5% of the NBA as an athlete, sure. where Tyler Heroes, I don't know if he's in the top 50% as an athlete in the NBA. I really don't. Probably not. Um, probably not. Defensive issues are definitely there, but that's more because of focus, not because of any physical limitations. If Miami feels like they can unlock that focus and get him to to prioritize the do, defensive end, then, then do you Don really Mitchell think so? I don't defender. think you've ever brought up. I don't think you've ever brought up this point before. Like, I, I feel like it's more tied to his physical limitations. Like, even as Low points out, like that he's a step slower on defense. He's not explosive Ooh. even offensively. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, no, are no, you talking no, about no, Tyler no, Donovan? No, Tyler Hero's. No, I'm sorry. The athle- no, defensively, Tyler Hero's oh. issue is athletically. Donovan Mitchell's issue. Is uh, that's focus. fine. Absolutely. Yeah, Donovan Absolutely. Mitchell. That's what I meant. Sorry. Donovan Mitchell's no, no, focus is on lost. defense. Seven near seven foot wingspan, super athlete, yeah. really strong. Like yeah. if you could just get Mitchell to lock in, he's going to be a good defender. Um, he could be an that's elite fair. defender. I mean, he was getting like, his comparison coming out of the draft was Avery Bradley with more offense. That was his comparison. <laughs> Nice. And so Tyler Hero was never compared to Avery Bradley, uh, and probably for a good thing. But yeah. um, so I don't know. I just that's I'll go back to what I just said. I think the Heat are really high on Tyler Hero. They're really happy with the way that he's put in the work and the way that he's developed over three years and what they have there. It's surprising. It's good. It's a hit in the NBA draft when those hits are so infrequent, especially yeah. in the middle of the first round. But um, you know if if it means get trading him to get Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell, I think they they would do it. Now, how good is how much better is Donovan Mitchell than Tyler Hero? That's an interesting question because now you get into what other things you're including in in that trade. Is it worth mm. that up? Is the upgrade from Tyler Hero to Donovan Mitchell worth all of your draft picks and a bunch of other stuff? I don't know. I, and I guess that's mm-hmm. where Miami's offer kind of is in between. Is okay, maybe I, I don't know what they're offering Utah. Um, so. I don't know. That's where we're at, but um, no, look, to, that's a, oh, go ahead. No, I, I wanted. No, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it kind of ties into, uh, you know, what what Zach Lowe writes about him. Uh, it, that there is that potential there, and that yes, he took steps in the right direction last season, and I think he was rewarded with the hardware for it because he did take a leap as far as being a, a more decisive scorer. But that there are still hopes that he can make incremental growth in every other aspect there. Uh, that, that, as you just pointed out, when in comparison to Donovan, like maybe he can't improve physically, but he can get a little stronger. He can get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more quick and anticipating thing, but that he's still a plus for a rebounder, that there's all the tools there. But if he can just make slight growth uh, in every aspect of his game, all of a sudden, I, I don't know that you're so willing to include him in a trade 
for Donovan Mitchell, but I, it's just you got to know. Weird... Like, it, it's so hard to project what that leap looks like. He's gonna get better from year three to year four, but it just how much better? We don't know. Um, he'll never be a good defensive player, Tyler Hero. He just won't. But he could be a really special. Out that he could be a middle. Yeah, he, he, he could I be think a very a great special quote. offensive player. And what it's what I've always said is Tyler Hero should be focused more on how he can get better offensively. Don't worry about defensively. That yeah. that will come. He's got to get bigger, stronger. But he's only 22 years old. He's only going to get average defensively by the time he's 27, 28. Look at Steph Curry. He just yeah. got average defensively a couple of years right. ago at like 30 years old. Some guys, it just takes a while for them physically here's a, to bloom into Here's being a good quote from, from Lowe. Yeah, uh, he tries. This is a quote from Lowe. He yeah. tries. Hero understands schemes and rotations. He can track the ball and rotate without losing his assignment. Hero is never going to be a plus defender. The physical limitations are more or less intractable. He'll right. always be a target. But there is a big difference between run-of-the-mill below average and total sinkhole if he works at it. Hero can be that run of the mill type, and yeah. that's fine. And that changes that's fine, exactly. But you got to be special offensively, and I just wonder what that next step for Tyler Hero looks like, to the point where maybe he can be the answer that Miami was has been looking for offensively, the answer that they're looking for currently in Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell. If those things are not available, because again, go back to what Zach Lowe reported, there's not very much traction on Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell trades. That was kind of just kind of thrown in there. At the top of the story, there um, we haven't really talked a lot about it. If, if Utah and Brooklyn aren't high on uh, on Tyler Hero, maybe the Heat are just sort of stuck with Tyler Hero going into the off season or going yeah, into the I, regular season. Yeah, um, which is not necessarily a bad place to be, but no. a big question I think regarding Tyler and his progress. Everything that we're talking about is kind of rooted in the opportunity, the opportunity that he thinks he deserves to get, which is whether or not he should be the starter for Miami moving forward. And I think that's the question about what leap Tyler can expect to take in year four if he becomes a starter. We'll answer that in the next segment. You're listening to Locked On Heat. Thanks for making Locked On your first listen every day. Too much sports? Too little time? That's why for your second listen, we created Locked On Sports Today, your daily 22-minute recap of the biggest games and stories from the local experts of Locked On. Be caught up every day in just 22 minutes with Locked On Sports Today, also available on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. And just a reminder that you can always reach us via email at LockedOnHeat at gmail.com via Twitter using the hashtag AskLLHeat. You can always leave comments for us in the YouTube section of our videos. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get podcasts on YouTube. There's so many different places for you to reach us and to get our content throughout the offseason. Again, we're looking at the Tyler Hero conundrum here today because it's the, the heart of Miami's hopes for the future in one way or another, whether the other teams, specifically Utah and or Brooklyn, view him as a potential star and whether or not they should be willing to make that trade for him. And, and you know, part of that comes with incredible scouting and you see the you hear about the behind the scenes. I'm sure Andy Ellisberg show, sold uh, Sean Marks on Tyler's work ethic and everything else, things that are pretty well reported and, and, and well known throughout yeah. the league, I think. But maybe still, the, even if he's if he's working that hard and he's still just a middling level player, uh, not quite a star, is he still the centerpiece of the future uh, and from a big trade or things of that sort? And again, the expectation is that he maybe he'll make a leap next year, but a lot of that depends on whether or not he will emerge as a starter. So looking at, at something that's low reported that he does think that uh, that Hero should be a starter. That because of those defensive limitations that we're talking about, putting him alongside plus defenders like Jimmy Kyle and Bam Adebayo will hide a lot of those issues. Yes. And I have to agree there. I, I think like we're kind of, I know a big part of it, and I know certainly Spo thinks this way, outside of everything else, because they've had to bend the way that the rotations work because they have to accommodate for what Tyler does and doesn't do. I don't think that they're going to give him the starting job outright, but he has to go and earn it also. And that's a big question mark for him is whether or not he'll be demonstrably better better than Duncan Robinson, Victor Oladipo, or Max Struess. That's his competition, uh, assuming that no big trade takes place. You know, he's, he's going to be fighting off those three players for the starting role there. But at the very least, as Loeb points out, 
his defensive issues might be over, you know, again, uh, masked to some degree yes. if he's in that starting lineup. You agree I, with I, that? You think I that, agree with that. that? Yeah. I mean, we were asked in a mailbag earlier this week, you know, what do we think that the starting five will be in, on opening night? And I, I put Tyler Hero in as a two guard. Yeah. Uh, I think, I, I think it just makes a ton of sense. And I understand that Spo basically benched Duncan Robinson for mm-hmm. Max Struess because of the defensive concerns there, and and he he tends to lean defense first, and I get that. But that didn't help in the Eastern Conference Finals. What the Heat needed in the Eastern Conference Finals was somebody that knows how to score on the court okay. next to Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry and Bam Adebayo and can, and, and can space the floor for them and do all the things that they were missing offensively. And if you can't get Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell, which would obviously address the offensive issue that Miami had, not having an, a half court, a half score, uh, a, an offensive source in the half court, uh, then Tyler Hero might be able to be that. And, and he projects as that guy. Um, Lowe had this in his piece, a 42% catch and shoot three point shooter. That's yeah. an elite number. That's top 1% of the league type, like top 1% or 99% percentile of the league there. Um, right. You know, he's got videos in there about just Tyler coming off a screen and attracting two defenders and then just having, you know, bam or somebody else cut wide open into the paint at the basket. Uh, that's the kind of thing. That I will say, did all I will say, that not to, Miami's offense. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but even I'm glad you brought the video because watching it again, I was just like reminded. I don't know if it's recency bias or the fact that I haven't seen NBA basketball in a couple of months and the summer league notwithstanding. Uh, you know, I, I watching Tyler coming off those screens and doing everything he does, I was like, damn, he's a good player. Like, he really yeah. is. Like, we've kind he's of just. He's a really good player. Collectively, he carried Miami's offense for large portions of the yes. regular season. That's why he was yes. sixth man of the year, not just the point totals, which is one of the things that we Big were part of it, yeah. during his candidacy. Um, look, Zach Lowe again brings up a really good comparison. We always want to do the De- Devin Booker light with 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 Tyler, but what if he's more like Clay Thompson as a starter? Mm. And I think mm. that's a great comparison. Look, he's not ever going to be what Clay Thompson is defensively, just because right. of the sheer size and the issues there, but offensively yeah i mean why not why can't he play the similar role where he's coming off of pin down screens he's running around the court he's doing all these things he's not a great natural passer even though he's gotten much better but naturally he's not a good passer uh naturally clay thompson isn't a good passer either they've just done the work and gotten better at it throughout their careers but to ask tyler hero to basically be a lead guard the way that miami did in his second season and that obviously did not work out um Mm. Just letting him be a pure shooting guard. He's got great size. People think he's like six foot, t- six feet tall. He's six five, six six. He's got yep. he's got good height. He can launch. He's got a high uh, release point. He can basically get that shot over any other guard that's that's defending him. And uh, if you lean into him being a pure shooting guard, where he's running around the court, not being asked to do too much offensively, he could still attack bent defenses and make plays out of that. You could still kind of flow into the pick and rolls that Miami likes to flow into. He could come off of dribble handoffs from Bam off of the weak side and have Bam roll, and he could still hit him with that pocket pass to the lob or whatever it is. He could still do all those things. But if you kind of make him more of an off-ball threat, suddenly I think as a starter with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo cutting to the basket and all this stuff, that creates the space that Miami was missing. And the other part of this too, and then I'll throw it back to you here. Miami is not going to be as good as they were defensively last year. They lost P.J. Tucker. We can argue about the overall impact of that, but they're just not going to be as good as defensively because now you're with Caleb Martin or Haywood Highsmith or somebody like that at the four, and you're just going to take a step down. You are. Right. And if you're not going to be good as good defensively, I, I still think they'll be good, but not as they're not going to be elite defensively they were, the, way, the way they were last year, then you better tilt offense a little bit more. You've got to lean into your offense. You've got to have your offense win games for you in, in a way that your defense no longer can. And if that's the case, if I'm Eric Spolstra, then yeah, in that starting lineup where I was leaning defense last year, whenever yep. I could, do I need to force myself to lean offense a little bit more? And maybe if that's the case, Tyler Hero does have the inside track in starting. I absolutely agree. I'm glad you brought that up because I was just thinking about it. As we're describing this, uh, his role as a starter would be so much more clearly delineated. This is the best thing for him. What do we always say about Tyler Hero? What is he? He is a bucket. And the best opportunity to be that bucket is as the starting two guard, alongside a true floor general, a playmaker in Kyle Lowry that has made everybody around him better throughout his whole career, including last season with the Miami. He made Bam better. He made Jimmy's job easier. 
And to some degree, he even helped out Tyler in limited minutes when they played together. But as a full-time starter, Tyler would have the benefit of having Kyle Lowry alongside him, running the offense, doing everything, putting him in position to score and getting him those easy looks. Just imagine a free-flowing offense with Jimmy off-ball cutting, doing what he needs to do, kind of like a latter-day Dwayne Wade during the latter stages of the Big Three era, a more aggressive Bam cutting to the basket, maybe spotting up from the outside of pick-and-pop situations, and then Kyle just throwing passes, bullet passes into the lane to get him those looks or, or maybe even toss mm-hmm. the lob to him. And then if that's all shut down for whatever reason, it's not like there's a lot of shot blockers out there in the NBA, then you spray it out to a wide open Tyler Hero where he can shoot that catch and shoot opportunity at a high clip. And all of a sudden you've got a, an ignitable offense that is among right. the best in the league. I, I think that's really the potential there. Like he is, we're looking at a 20 point per game score who could maintain that scoring average, even when the ball out of his hands to some degree, I think he can continue to be a top scorer on this roster alongside that starting unit there. And I don't even think it matters who you play at the four at that point, because you've got four, you know, three other plus defenders, you've got playmakers at almost every position, and you've got one of the best shooters in the league in Tyler, as far as the opportunities that he might get yeah. next year as a starter. So I think we're kind and if of... you put him in that spot, you allow him also, as Jimmy and Kyle age and, and age out of this yes. roster, yes. then you're allowing Tyler Hero to sort of more organically grow into maybe a, a pure one or a more of a lead playmaker type or whatever, a, a, a number one evolve. source on offense. Yeah. Um, whether, you know, maybe he's just a pull-up three-point shooter. His pull-up three-point shooting is really good. The, the metrics on that are great. Um, so it's not, it's not just catch and shoot. It's also the pull-up three. He could do it all from with, with his shot. He just needs to get progressively better at those other things if he's a starter you mitigate the things defensively that he's bad at because he's bracketed by awesome defenders like bam and jimmy and kyle and then offensively you could just sort of lean into what it is that he does best right now which is just shoot the ball yeah Uh, i think we're pretty settled here i like the clay thompson comparison uh i think that's a a good opportunity for him again a role that Clay has developed because he's playing alongside Curry. And I think now all of a sudden you can make the similar case for Tyler next season is that if he gets, if he's put in that right spot as the two guard, as the scorer, that's what he, that's just what he does best. And so why not let him do what he does best? You know, Miami tries to, to some degree, pigeonhole what their players do. But I think you have to maximize what they do well and put them in a position where they can highlight and showcase that skill set. And I think they gave Tyler that opportunity, but they also asked him to do much more than I think he was capable of because he was leading that offense. Now you bring back Victor Lodipo. He settles into a six-man role. He could be what Tyler was last season. If he's, if he's as effective a scorer, that remains to be seen if he's healthy and whether or not he can play at that kind of level. But as a playmaker plus defender, et cetera, he could be a very unique six man of the year candidate, something different than what Tyler was last year, but still in that same kind of similar role of leading whatever the second unit might look like with alongside Gabe Vincent, alongside Max Struess or whomever else comes off the bench. So it's a good position for Tyler to be in. And I think it's a much better position than Miami fans are looking at right now. Again, I know we've, there's been a lot well, of optimism from us this week. You had something else to add? Well, I mean, it also increases his trade value at the end of the day. If, if he could sure. do it against starters in the opening months for of the sure. season. The one problem with that, and I know we're running we're running late here, but um, Tyler Hero's extension is still uh, on the to-do list for Miami. The expectation yeah. is that something will get done before the regular season, and I think it needs to. I, I think you risk alienating him if you don't sign him to that extension before the regular season and sort of risk it in restricted free agency next year the way that we just saw with DeAndre Ayton, and, yeah. that, and that becomes an, uh, an untenable, unhappy situation. I don't think Miami can afford to do that. And so the problem with that is if – as these reports are, the Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell stuff, if this goes into the regular season in terms of maybe Brooklyn or Utah being unwilling to trade them in the offseason, but Miami has to sign Hero to that extension before the regular season begins, which is the deadline on that, then if he does sign that extension, he becomes nearly dif- nearly impossible, extremely difficult to include in any kind of Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell trade. So if that's the case, then uh, and I think that's what the Heat are basically waiting on here, um, then maybe... Tyler Hero is the answer for better or worse because he might be the only option that they have if that ends up being the case. And it's not a bad place to be. I think we can kind of settle into that too. Like yeah. I know a lot of people have surprisingly turned on him, some you know, similarly to what they you know, how they turned on Kyle, but I think there's again, as as Lowe points out, as GMs around the league have pointed out, like he can get better. He's still just twenty two. Like 
you know, the comparisons, the high end comparisons to like a, a Devin Booker or CJ McCollum, like, you know, just a few years ago before Chris Paul joined that roster, how many people were looking at Devin Booker and saying he was just putting up empty calories? And that yeah. was on a, a not particularly good Phoenix Suns team. And all of a sudden you add Chris Paul, it's like, oh, Devin Booker, one of the best players in the NBA, an Olympian, et cetera, all this stuff. It's like, you know, a lot can change playing alongside the right player. Maybe it's a combination. You know, the two guys that almost every Heat fan wants to have traded to some degree, Kyle Lowry and, and Tyler Hero, they could be the answer to saving Miami's regular season. And we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out. But I, I kind of, over the course of this past week, as much as we've been engaged in talks about Mitchell, talks about Durant and exploring it from every angle, this week has been one, for me anyway, of renewed optimism. And I think Tyler Hero could be a big part of that moving forward. So let us know. Let me know. Uh, you know, disagree, agree, whatever. You can always send in comments, again, via YouTube, uh, via email. You can always uh, DM us or, uh, you know, use the hashtag Ask Hello Heat. But thanks to everybody for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. For your second listen, get up to date with the latest news and rumors in the NBA. Just 30 minutes every day with Lockdown NBA. Locked on NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. This is David Mill signing off for now. Thanks so much for joining me, Wes. Happy to be.